there, welcome back to Plow and Pantry. Today I am doing something that I've wanted to do for a long time and that is to can my own pimento peppers so that I can make homemade pimento cheese. And I had to redo this little part of clippage here because I wanted to show, I lost some footage and I wanted to show you that they, I had two different types of peppers going on here. They are both pimento peppers. The smaller, like flat round one is called a sheep's nose pimento and the other one is the regular type. And I just wanted to try them both out and honestly they tasted very similar. And they honestly also tasted just like a sweet red bell pepper. So if you want to do this with red peppers, you probably could. I just slice these off into large chunks and then get them onto a cookie sheet, skin side up under the broiler and that is how they get started. That was the footage I had lost. So I redid that little section just to show you the change. Once they are charred on the skin, they come out of the broiler and I put all the ones that have the blistered skin in a bowl. And there's always a few outliers of some that do not have the blistered skin yet. And so I move them to the middle and put them back in. And the ones that are sitting in the bowl, I cover with plastic wrap and just let them steam because that's what you're supposed to do. So it's okay if you don't get them all in steaming at the same time, as long as they're all warm at the same time. So in this batch, I had to do two little sections of it. So most of them went into that bowl right there. I'm putting just a few back in the oven and then covering that with plastic wrap so that they can steam while the other ones continue to blister. Then when they come out, I just pull the plastic wrap back and add them into the bowl. And it's that easy, cover them back up and let them steam for a while. You really want them blistered because that does make it easier to peel. There was a, um, I leave them in the bowl long enough to cool down enough to handle. There was a previous video, I think it might have been my canning green chilies video, which I can link for you if you wanna see that. But I had mentioned the peel, like all of the recipes for canning peppers from the National Center for Home Food Preservation, ball canning, all those things, always tell you to peel the peppers. And I had asked a master food preserver like 20 years ago why we do that. And they had said that it was because there was bacteria on the skin, which never made any sense to me. And some of you guys mentioned that in the comments too, like for various reasons. Other recipes that don't require you to peel them, like when you're doing a salsa and you have bell peppers or something, things like that. And so I have done some re-research and what I have found out is that hot peppers specifically have often a tougher skin and can get bitter. It's a food quality issue. I think I'd like to redo some green chilies with the skin on because I like the smoky flavor, but for this one, I did taste the skin and it was bitter and it was tough. So I will go forward keeping with the peeling of the pimento peppers every time I make them. Um, then I'm chopping them up and getting them into their jars. Now I use them chopped, that's why I chop them before I put them in. If you use your pimentos or your roasted red peppers in whole large chunks, you can put them in that way, it really doesn't matter. But I like to put them in the way that I use them, which is in um, kind of dices, but I am being not a Nazi about uniformity here. I am being pretty loosey-goosey. <laughs> as long as I don't have huge pieces and tiny pieces, I don't care. I kind of like a little variety. I really only use these in pimento cheese and one like corn salsa type recipe. So I don't need them to be all in perfect little dices. So I do rough chop and then I start getting them into the jars. I'm putting mine in four ounce jars because those are the size that I use them. Anytime I make a recipe that calls for these, they always call for like a tiny little jar. And so that's what I'm putting them in. I did get four of these jars full. These have a one inch headspace requirement. And I pack them in semi loosely. You're supposed to pack them kind of loosely. I didn't want them super tight packed, but I wanted to, I was gonna have not enough for five full jars, but more than enough for four. And so I packed them down a little bit tighter than normal. Um, I did have these jars sitting in hot water because they are going into pressure canner where they have hot food with hot water poured over them. And so the jars need to be hot and the water going in the canner needs to be hot. Um, if you cold pack, you do cold jars and cold water and vice versa. It helps prevent siphoning and goes for um, just food quality and stuff. So I'm topping these off with hot water and I went a little bit above the one inch 
headspace mark there because I knew that these would, as I debubbled them, that they would drop in level and I would need to top them off. And so I was kind of just doing a little advance topping there. But then I, so I debubbled them and then I just went ahead and put them back on or more water back on. And then I wipe, I always wipe my, my rims usually with vinegar. It just helps cut through any fingertip oils, any, there's no like sugar or anything sticky in this, but bits of food. You'd be surprised when you look at the cloth you wipe with, you, the jars will look clean and you'll look at your cloth and be like, oh, there's red on there. There must have been something on the rim. So lids and rings fingertip tight. And these will be ready to go in the canner. Because they are, a, this is a small batch of small jars, I'm using my digital pressure canner today. And this is exactly why I love it. My main canner is a All-American and it is big and it takes a long time to get up to pressure and all that. And so it's really nice and quick to just go with the digital canner, um, especially for small batches. Otherwise, I probably honestly wouldn't haul out my big canner for these four little jars and then they wouldn't get canned because I'm lazy like that. I don't want to spend three hours canning something that can take one hour. These go in for 35 minutes, at least at my elevation. I have a weighted thing on this, um, this canner. And then there we have pimentos ready for me to make my own pimento cheese and knock an item off my bucket list. Thank you guys for joining me today. I hope to see you on the next video.